Alright, I'm doing another gameplay guide for Winston, uh, specifically talking about how to play around counters. So this first game is going to be Colosseo, and I'm going to be playing against a Reaper, um, and that's going to happen all game long. And then the second game I'm going to do is an Antarctic Peninsula, and I'm going to play against a Bastion and then a Roadhog, and I'm going to talk through how I avoid them and how do I still end up being successful despite staying on Winston who's a very squishy tank and get easily murdered by those tanks by those uh, by those heroes if you end up playing things out of, out of position. So we're gonna start this Coliseo game um, we've just rolled them on first point again they had a really really bad lineup against Winston um, turn the sound down so jump right go on him force bubble Giliana great go off the Zarya do a short jump Zapping her out, and she's dead. So I'm going to notice right here, believe it or not, I was actually opening the scoreboard as it's happening, because I knew she was going to die. I like literally had the scoreboard on like while I'm zapping her. I could see that the Widow just swapped to Reaper, and you can see that on the top right. You see Lucky swaps to uh, from Widow to Reaper. Great, so she swapped to Reaper. So my usual advice, if you've ever seen my Call of Seal map guide, which I recommend you watch if you've never seen it before, is I say, hey, for tanks, after you win that first fight, go up, play this corner, right? Play crosswalk, and hold this corner right here and prevent them from taking any more space. You'll notice that I don't do that intentionally. Why? Because I know the Reaper's gonna come out of spawn, and then he's gonna teleport to crosswalk. I cannot stop a Reaper, right? It's impossible for, for Winston to stop a Reaper in this situation. He's just gonna farm me for ult charge, force bubble out, or force me to jump, and I'm gonna lose a bunch of health. Especially since I have a low healing team with Mercy Zen, a, an unusual support lineup, I cannot afford to lose health right now. So you see that instead of going up there, I instead stayed back. And what I'm doing is I'm looking to see how are they gonna position and see what I need to do. Because I'm still very strong against Ana, I'm still strong against Zen, I'm still strong against Ash. Okay, so those are all vulnerable heroes, but I can't do anything right now against the Reaper, so I just need the Reaper to come out, and I'm just going to let him do what he's going to do, okay? I see Reaper come out, he's at crosswalk. Again, I see my Tracer fighting him, still not diving, because there's, there's no way I can kill him. Again, the supports are all going to be coming out of spawn, even if I dove him perfectly right now, not going to kill him. I'm just chilling, waiting, right? Cart's moving, so, you know, good for us, right? As long as the cart moves, it's good for us. I just chill, wait, stay alive. If I die here, for example, let's say I jump in and I die, then they come out right now and stop this cart. As long as I stay alive, merely my existence allows the cart to keep pushing, which is something that's important for, for players to realize, tanks to realize. So I see that Reaper's tucked in to the left, which gives me an opportunity to go for the back line. So let's look through this. Starting from here, I'm playing back. I'm gonna see the Zen, okay? I see the Ash to the right as well. So I'm looking at the Ash, right? I don't wanna jump yet, because if I jump right now, the Reaper's gonna see me and immediately just murder me. So I'm waiting, I see Reaper tuck into the left. He goes left, he's clearly not looking at me anymore, he's probably looking for the Tracer, and now, I jump, because now the Reaper has no ability to get to me quickly, okay? The Reaper clearly is looking for me, but he's like, oh shoot, and now I'm out of position, right, from, from his perspective to be able to attack me. So I see the Reaper, I go for backline, zap, right, slam, combine with the Tracer, kill the Zen instantly, Reaper goes after me, I turn immediately, right, get through the bubble, and get out. And it, the Reaper got pretty close to killing me, right? He chases after me, one, two, three, right? Those are all solid meat shots, right? Managed to get out, get healed, Reaper thinks about chasing me, I jump if I need to to get away, and I go right back to the cart. Why? Because what else am I going to do, right? <laughs> I have a low healing team, there's no real easy way to get a mega here except for this one, which is an awkward spot for me to get through from here. So I just play back, and I chill, and see what, what's going to happen. Again, cart is still moving, right? If I jump away, maybe the Zarya just steps down and stops the cart. But as long as I simply just stand here, I can maybe prevent the Zarya from doing anything. This jump is a mistake, oh no, I remember what happened. So my Tracer gets slept here and I'm going in to try to save her. Because if my Tracer dies, the fight's probably over anyway, and I think there's a chance with Bubble plus Primal that I can survive here, even though I know that I'm jumping into the Reaper being relatively close to me. But you see that I jump away from the Reaper, put Bubble down, and I walk through the front side of the Bubble to prevent the Reaper from attacking me. Very, very important is to have spatial awareness on Winston, okay? I don't want the Reaper to fight me, but I need to go in here, even though I don't want to, but I have to, to save my, my Tracer. I go in, I drop Bubble, Reaper is on this side of the Bubble. If I stay here, right, and zone out the Zarya, the Reaper will kill me. The Reaper is going to do more damage to me than the Zarya is, so I might as well walk through the Bubble. So, you see, I zap, 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 zap. I force Zarya to use all the ammo. I feel like the Reaper is about to be on top of me, which is correct. I get through the Bubble right as he enters the Bubble. I save my Tracer, who's able to rewind, because the Zarya couldn't double-team her with the, with the Ana. Now I'm here, Reaper is on top of me. Uh, I think he was relatively low here, because he, I think, yeah, he, I think he just gets nervous just getting uh, poked by the Zen. Reaper fades, and I don't even need Primal, and I just back off. So I zap 
Zarya makes the Zed nervous. She pops trance. This is obviously a bad trance. Right? She didn't need this, but or he didn't need this, or she didn't need this. Zarya didn't need this, right? Bad trance, but great force. That's why you know zapping is good. And where am I going? Just low ground. Normally, we always say take high ground, take high ground, take high ground. I can't take high this high ground. <laughs> this is five on one with a trance going on. I'm not taking this high ground. So I just stay low ground. See what they do. Zen drops. That's a mistake. Jump in right away. I see Zarya bubble her off. We're fighting here. I assume we're going to lose this fight, right? It, realistically, they should probably win this fight. They have strong high ground control. They have short spawn, etc. So I just bubble here, see what I can get. Reaper gets nanoed. What do I do? Leave immediately. What am I going to do? I can't fight Reaper. I go for the supports. I Unlucky that I eat the coach gun here, so I can't get the slam down. So she coach guns me backwards. Yeah. So I don't get the slam on the Ana. I drop. Dies anyway. I see Zarya's Discord, so I'm trying to focus her down. She bubbles, I go for the Reaper. You notice when I fight Reaper, I do not get closer. Even though he's still gonna hit about 100% of his shots anyway, it's gonna be less of it that's headshots. So even playing this far away reduces his damage significantly if you can play this far away, okay? It's his mistake to not be walking towards me to increase his DPS, right? But instead he plays for max range, probably because he's low and he gets nervous. Wraith is forced. I'd love to be able to kill him, but he gets around the corner. It's not easy for me to jump there. I'd have to jump up here, probably slam to this wall, and then slide down on top of him. But I don't actually know the entire support situation right now. Uh, I know Zen died initially. I guess I just killed him. I actually should realize I probably could have killed him instantly here. Um, look for it. Oh, yeah, now I go in. I go for the Reaper, who I know is low up here. I know he's going for the Mega. For the, sorry, for the Mini. That's why I'm jumping towards the Mini right away. The problem is I don't have Pack. I zap, 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 zap. He's discorded. I expected him to die here. He pops ulti, and then I make uh, an interesting decision here, which is to primal. Um, I figured that because he's discorded, he would die here. So he gets pretty low. Uh, Trance is popped, unfortunate. He gets really low. This is super, super low. How do I like, drop him? Uh, he gets that. It's only 130. So I fall him down. This is actually almost perfect primal mechanics, but sadly, he teleports away. I did not expect this teleport, which is smart on his behalf. So I get a little bloodthirsty here. I want to see if I can get the kill, because I know that if I land on him, plus right-click zap, plus melee, he should die instantly. Unfortunately, he tucks in here. Great job by him. This is a bad bad dive for me. I should just let this go, and I die. So I make a mistake, right? Chasing after Reaper, but I think it's good to continue to be aggressive against Reaper when advantages exist. Not in a neutral phase, not without an advantage, but don't be afraid of what are normally your counters if you have an advantage. Like in that scenario, I knew he was low, right? I knew that he'd been discorded. He might get discorded again, and that's why I'm trying to follow up and, and get the kill. So I come back here. Kind of a weird situation. I would expect the fight to be over. That's why I'm just kind of chilling here. I'm like kind of waffling. Then I see the Zen kill is I'm like, oh, okay, I can go here. I go up, zap the Tracer, I get Discord right away and blown up. I jump as soon as I feel the Reaper shoot me. So you're gonna watch this. I didn't even know the Reaper was here. Uh, I think I, I guess I, no, I didn't see him. So I go, he shoots me, I immediately jump in, right? I hit my head against the wall or against the ceiling to make sure I get in quickly. Go back, chill, I go get Mega, and then I regroup. Oh yeah, I come back out. Even though I'm not full health, I recognize my Tracer and Zen are doing enough work that I gotta help them. This is a very non-traditional fight. It's not the normal, like, set up five and go. But I can tell my Tracer's doing a lot of work, so I want to help here. I see the 1v1. I, I go. Unfortunately, she's dead already. Zen's here, though. I tuck in for a second just to cover because I'm reloading. I didn't expect this to be here. Baptiste is here. I'm going to bubble. I get out of LOS because I'm super low. He can kill me in basically two bursts if he hits the headshots, plus Discord, so possibly even one burst. But... Thankfully, he's walking into the crossfire of my Zen, who discords him, does a ton of damage, and then kills him. Most of the damage is coming from the Zen, not me. But I have to leave. 200 health, there's not much I can do here. Zen kills another. But like from the Zen's perspective, he has like so much space here to constantly kill people. Right. I had Reaper made a mistake. Right, discords. Tracer's dead. He steps up. He's charging. Kills the Zen. Yeah. I mean, no one's going after the Zen at all on that Reaper, who was already two-thirds health. So I regrouped my team. I know the Mercy went towards uh, my Zen. Probably, I didn't realize she was going for the res, but my Mercy's going that way, that's fine. I'm looking for the Zarya on point because I can hear my Torb and fighting the Zarya, and I know the Zarya is potentially killable, okay? Because we killed so much of the backline. This is possibly a kill. I want to cut her off from reinforcements. I go in, bubble off to make sure she doesn't get healed from here. Zap, kill. So I saw the Reaper drop down, I go for the Tracer to try to force her out. I want to force Rewind. As soon as Rewind's forced for her, my Tracer can easily kill her. So Rewind's now forced. Uh, does she even have Rewind? Oh, she didn't even have Rewind here. Oh yeah, so either way, I mean, either she dies here or she Rewinds. Yeah, she misses Pulse, she dies. 
get the kill. Very important when your big jobs is, as Winston is to force out abilities from Tracer. I step forward. I see the Reaper. I just zap him from right click, like from from you know longish range. I jump in. This is another scenario where I know he's low. I'm trying to get the kill on him. I jump in. I know the Reaper is behind me. I know he's not killable because I saw the Baptiste heal him. So I bubble dance a little bit. Messing around. Great. Bubbles forced. Get out. And then we reset, right? Now I rejoin with Cart because I need to have LOS to see like what exactly is going on. I don't want to be playing from here because I can't see anything. In every fight I have, if I see the Reaper at point blank, I can take 240 damage if he shoots me in the face. So I don't want to play close range until I'm ready to play close range. So I'm just trying to play on Cart, get it, get angles. I see people on bridge. I don't know exactly where everyone is. Window is popped here, so I don't quite want to go yet, right? Not through the window. I don't want to like walk up here and try to jump in because I'll get murdered. I come back here, I see the Reaper. I can't kill the Reaper. Right? I see he's already killed my Zen. I cannot solo the Reaper anyway. So I'm gonna go up top after their backline. Right? I'm on top of the Baptiste. Window's not a problem because I'm, you notice that I took the angle to go around, jump up top, and then go after the Baptiste. Right? Trance is forced. At this point, I just expect to die. Right? I'm just jumping just to farm uh, Ult Charge. Working around, being like, hey, is there any chance that we can win this fight? I'm looking around for numbers. I figure, at this point, I figure there's no way we can win this fight. If I thought, that I should reset, I would have walked this way and jumped away easily. But because I understand there's no way to win this fight at this point, I just suicide this and, and just die, right? This jump in is a suicide. This is 100% a suicide, right? Just jump in, just farming whole charge, right? Primal, or uh, Death Blossom gets popped. Our Zen pops trance. This is a bad trance. We should just die here, which is fine. I mean, like, okay, if it's going, I'll try to get a kill, but realistically, nothing here is going to die, which is exactly what happened. You notice that I have Primal, but I choose not to use it because this was a suicide attempt the whole time. <laughs> All right, we're coming back now. So it might feel, one thing to note is that we're kind of trading fights, right? We're winning one, losing one, winning one, losing one. And the cart is not moving as much as it did previously, but that's normal. And that's kind of the map design. It is strongly defender favored on this section of the map because of the way that it turns and that the fact that they have high ground and the fact that they have short spot. But trading is good when you have an advantage, right? We have a massive 60 meter advantage against them. So trading is great. Like that's totally fine. Trading every other fight is how we win the game. So even though it feels maybe not as impactful as when we started the game, that is by design, right? By map design and it is good to be trading. Anyway, um, we're gonna notice here, I'm gonna hear the tracer, I think. Yep, pure slash ping. I'm gonna try to force her out. Right, force some blinks out. I know she's going this way. I missed that zap. It was close though. I rejoined the fight, go in. I understand, hey, the the tracer is not here, and I think I know there's other deaths as well. Let me figure out what I know is the information right now. Baptiste is here. I don't I don't actually know if I know that the other two are in the by the mega area. I actually might have heard them, and that's why I go in so aggressively here. But as you can see, the, the the Zen and Reaper are not exactly in position. I go for the Zarya, then I zap. She bubbles, I immediately go for the Baptiste. We get primal here, and I have to make this quick read. I'm right in the edge of bubble, but the bubble's going to break. As soon as the bubble breaks, I pop primal, because I figure, like, with the Zarya being this low, I think we can actually win this fight. I go right in. This is not a great jump. I actually should have landed over here. I see Zarya's bubbled fine, whatever. Now I want to keep the Reaper out of the fight. I do a good job juggling him. He gets low, right? This is basically a kill right there. Very close to a kill. Yeah, he's down until 50 health, and then the Zen just kills me. The good news is we win the team fight. So everybody else dies here, and then we end up doing this. So let's watch and be like, okay, what was my impact here? So I go in right away. I can't land on her because I'm too far away. I zap, force out that first bubble, go for the Baptiste. I think Lamp is forced without me. Yeah, Lamp is forced without me, nothing to do with me. I zap the Baptiste, right? Molten Core is popped. I get primaled here, but me being here, right, with the bubble prevents my Tracer from dying. I, I'm literally body blocking and shield blocking for her right now. I pop primal as I get low, which allows me to continue to make space, right? Knock him back. Zarya's bubbling here and it's high energy, but she has no health. Right, so she's forcing my team back. We're doing a good job kiting her. Then I go in, knocking these two around, right? Tying up the support, tying up the Reaper, and getting the Reaper. It's not like I'm just feeding damage. Like, I'm also getting the Reaper low. Knocking him back, still knocking him back. But yeah, I mean, Discord plus Reaper, yeah, I'll die there. But the problem is, the Zarya's out of bubbles. I forced multiple bubbles myself. The grab was wasted, right? I traded it basically for Primal. And then that ends up doing enough to them to result in winning the fight. Okay, again, you see the Reaper teleporting out, but the Reaper has no health. 
he tries to go in, he just dies to a random shot because this all damage is all me, right? Like that that all that damage that Reaper took was me, and then one shot from the Torp kills him, right? Force up the bar bubbles. Like that's a, a big reason why we won is the primal. Even though I didn't get any kills with primal, I did enough to force resources that my teammates got kills. And again, at higher levels, that's pretty much what tank life is like. You're rarely gonna get kills when you are initiating because they're too good, right? The enemy team is too good and they'll understand that they will never die to the first attempt to kill them, okay? You'll force, their positioning is good, their ability usage is good, right? Their instincts are good, they'll stay alive. But you progressively wear them down and then your DPS or supports actually end up getting a lot of the final blows. Walking forwards now, uh, they switched to the Ball, which is, I would say, a bad decision. Um, I, ball's really good if you're stalling, trying to slow down the cart. I think trying to take it back and take back a huge lead is really tough unless you're super good at Ball. Again, you notice that I'm not jumping because I do not know where the Reaper is. Right, I'm waiting. I see the Reaper now. As soon as I know the Reaper's there, you see I go. I follow in the Tracer because I saw the Tracer Pulse Bomb was used, which kills Lamp, land on the Baptiste, kill him with, along with the Tracer. Now I look, hey, what do I got here? I see the tree Reaper. I was like thinking, hey, do I drop? As soon as I see the Reaper, I choose not to drop. That's like very quick, but watch it. Right here, I think about maybe dropping. Nope, see the Reaper, turn around right away. So I went in, I probably should have gone in and helped my Tracer earlier, but I didn't have jump anyway, so I couldn't have done very much, but then just walk at them. So go in on the, the Tracer. This is actually ultimately a bad jump. Um, I was trying to react to my Tracer going in. But you see how low I got for no for like no value, right? This is not this is not good value. Like me just holding two two of them back, feeding away 400 health when I have a support lineup which struggles to heal. This is not good value. This is me just getting wrecked. So I jump back, figure out what's going on cart. I see that my Zen's in the in the fight with the ball. Reload, get out of the way. Again, every little bit of damage matters right now because we have such a low healing lineup. I'm looking around. Okay, see Tracer. She sticks me. I bubble. I'm dying to die. Right? There's just not enough healing. It's fine, right? If they want to use it, use it to, to to take the fight, I, I saw the tracer died early. Like it's unlikely we'd win the fight. That's fine, no problem. Reset again. Trading fights one for one is great when you are leading, right? They're not appreciably changing the lead at all. All these fights are just are just burning time away that they need in order to win the game. So Reaper's here. I'm trying to mostly hold him back. He's never gonna die here. I'm just holding him back with right clicks until the cart gets closer so that I can fight. I don't want to fight out here, because that's really, really far away from my team. I need the cart to get a little bit closer, even though it gives a forward spawn, so that their back line is vulnerable. So you see that I'm just I'm just stalling here for time, right? Just waiting, waiting. Now I look, oh, the Zen's here trying to hide. Nope, no problem. Jump in, I bubble him off, force trance, excellent. Did I get a kill? No, but I forced an ultimate, right? And all I did was trade dive and bubble for it. No problem. Now trance is wasted. So Reaper ults here. I can tell that he's not gonna die right now, so I just, cover uh, from the Reaper, reload. Tracer's actually shooting at me this whole time. And I zap him to try to finish. I dove him because he waited so long that I thought he didn't have Wraith. It's odd to wait until all the way down to 50 health because he, the last shot was a headshot, he dies, right? So it's odd for him to wait that long. And then I make a mistake doing this dive. I can't quite get out of the bubble dance well enough and then I die here. So this probably a mistake. Um, I was expecting my Torb to be up here helping me fight the Reaper. But if you see when the fight starts, so you're gonna see death, you see where the Torb is? So I knew where my Torb is, I could see him. So my Torb is pretty close to the fight right now. Ulti is popped, I hide. I expect my Torb to be here. And then after this, I took my Torb to follow. If you watch, the Torb is gonna back way the heck back, which is not the right call, right? He needs to advance right now and fight and be with me and help kill this Reaper with me. But instead he's playing really, really far back for no reason. Anyway, reset. So I'm coming back. I'm just trying to stall cart because if there's only one person moving the cart, I can stall the cart, right? Again, stalling is good. Time, right, is on in on my side, right? I just need to burn down time here in any way possible. It's just the ball, I can stall it for a long time. But once the Reaper shows up, once the Reaper shows up, I leave. You notice I don't use bubble. I don't need to use bubble. I'm not going to take a ton of damage here, right? The Reaper wasn't that close to me. I still have armor, so I don't bother wasting bubble because I want to have bubble available for when I do go. I see the Reaper's trying to climb the stairs, so I switch switch directions, okay? It's not my job to deal with the Reaper. If the Reaper walks up these stairs and starts shooting my backline, that's their problem, <laughs> quite frankly. Like, you have to understand your limits as a hero, right? I cannot stop the Reaper, so it's it's simply not my job. Like, just popping bubble here and zapping the Reaper is bad. Then the Reaper just forced bubble for nothing, just by existing. I need to find another opportunity to kill someone else. So I see the back line, I go, I see where the Baptiste is, I can fight him, but the problem is if I fight him, the Zen back here will do a ton of damage to me. 
right? Sooner or later. So instead, I jump by him. You see, I walk off the bridge to get extra distance here and then go. Right? Get a little extra distance, then jump. The Zen knows I'm coming for him. I, just, I use bubble. I expect him to fight me. He doesn't fight me, so this actually ends up being a bad bubble. Right? I know I'm not going to kill either one of them. That's not my goal here. Right? My goal here is just to tie him up. Okay? Look for the Zen. Go back for the BAP. I see the BAP's low. Right? Zap. Get him. Tracer, me, end up killing both of them. Excellent. Both supports are dead. Okay? That's your job as Winston. Not killing the Reaper, killing those supports. Right? Killing squishy DPS. I'm going to jump up because I see the Reaper's in a fight, but I don't have a good angle right now to jump on him, and I don't want to land on him too soon. I want to give myself time to identify, hey, what's going on in this fight? Am I going to bubble? Right? But he's also not going to expect this. I drop, and then he dies almost instantly. Great. I see the Tracer. She rewinds. Force her out. Great, excellent. So team wipe, or except for the ball, we're gonna go forwards. I'm just looking, seeing how they set up. Again, same deal, right? Playing against Reaper, always in the fight. Where's the Reaper? Where's the Reaper? Don't jump until you see the Reaper. Okay, Reaper's there. I'm just trying to poke him a little bit. Even 50 damage against the Reaper can be very annoying, right? It really hurts his ability to be aggressive if he takes poke damage. I see Reaper here top right. Is it my job? Absolutely not my job. Can't do anything about it. But I also see that my Tracer is dead. So we're, I know we're four and five. There's not a lot we can do unless I get a really good opportunity. I do. The Zen is all alone. Bubble him off. Zap, 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 zap. Kill him, right? Free kill. All I did was trade bubble and about 300 health, 250 health. I go for the Baptiste now, but the bubble's nearly dead, so I know I'm not going to kill him. He pops a window to kill me. I'm like, cool, and I just jump out. But I know I'm probably going to die here because I see the Reaper is killed too. I knew my Tracer was dead, so that's fine. We just die. But we forced out... Uh, Reaper ult there, and we forced out window. So, great. Like, no problem. So we still have our ultis. Alright. I just have to ball a little bit because he's the only one near me. I didn't notice the Reaper teleporting. Reaper teleports, I reload, I jump on him. Again, why am I jumping on him? Normally, I wouldn't, but he's fighting my Tracer. He's overextended where no one can heal him, right? The Baptiste can't heal him from this angle, not consistently. And I can get a lot of good burst damage on him right away. So jump in, burst, right, do the melee. He immediately bails. Great. And he's gone. So now I know the Reaper is down to my right, so I'm not going to do anything that involves me attacking the Reaper. Do I jump the Zen right now? I do not, because the Reaper could easily change and go after me. I'm also not full health, so the Zen might kill me himself. Tracer sticks me here, uh, because she's going to come behind me. I didn't hear her, so she goes double blinks in, right? Sticks me. That's fine. I know that I'm sticked. I know the stick only does 300 damage, so I know I'm not going to die. So I'm jumping here, and with eight and a half seconds left, I just want to keep these two back, right? And force the ball to solo contest point and then get burned down and die. With Primal, I cannot die here against two supports, so I'm not worried about it. So I get stuck, I jump, and I intentionally do not pop Primal because I want the splash damage of landing. So I land. Now I'm going to pop Primal as soon as I get field danger. You notice I even wait another second to confirm whether or not anything can actually hit me. 117 health. These two supports can't hit me in the bubble. I turn. I wait. Right? I look. Okay, ball's here. Okay, now I'm going to pop Primal because now I might die, even though I actually got suzu so I probably could have waited a little longer. So now I knock the supports back. Again, good jump right here. Jump right in. I'm aiming primarily for the Zen. I knock him to the corner. I want to force Trance because I assume he has Trance right away. That's why I'm going for him. I don't want to get the Baptiste low and then have the Zen pop Trance and then have like half health or a third health. I want to force the Zen right away. Zen does more damage than Baptiste does. I force Trance and then fight's over. Okay, cool. So hopefully that helps you understand again how to play against Reaper as Winston, identify where he is, and then just constantly avoid him as much as you possibly can. But if he does get himself low or you have an advantage, do not be afraid to jump him. So this is Antarctic Peninsula. I'm going to be playing against Bastion for the first map and then Roadhog against the second. So similar to the first, um, to the first map, on Colosseo, a lot of this is gonna be about identifying where the Bastion is and whether or not he has assault or tank form, as I often call it, even though it's not actually tank form. So if he has, if I know where he is and he has assault form, I have to play very, very differently. If I know where he is and he doesn't have assault form, I can dive him freely, right? And if I don't know where he is, I have to play very safe because I might accidentally jump into him, which is going to happen in this game. So I come on right now, I don't know there's a Bastion because it's the very start of the game. I see the Zarya, I see there's a Bastion now. I see there's four people here. Do I dive? Even though there's a juicy dive? No, because the Bastion will go to assault form and just murder me right away. So I just chill. That's fine. I do not want the Zarya to walk up and take this choke, right? I have to defend this space, so I do. What do I, how do I do that? I just go up and zap her, right? Just zap, 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 zap. So I'm going to do 60 damage a second. Zarya's going to do 90 damage a second, as long as she, nobody feeds her energy, right? Which nobody is. 
that's fine. I mean, yeah, she does more damage damage to me than I do to her, but that's okay because I'm not really going to stick around that long anyway. I'm mostly just preventing her from walking by me to go to my team. I zap. I know that I saw that there's a Baptiste here. He actually gets shot out of the air. I was actually confused in the game what, how this happened. So yeah, he gets shot out of the air by Hanzo. I was expecting to jump here and go after both of them, but I zap, 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 zap. I look around the corner. I'm like, wait, the Baptiste is dead? Oh, cool. All right, fine. And again, you see I forced the, the Zarya back by not doing anything special. I'm literally like a bronze level player can do this just by zapping. But you have to read that the Zarya has no energy and you have to not shoot her bubble, right? I'm just waiting, wait her bubble, zap, 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 zap. And then now I just push her back because she's scared of me and she's scared of my team, right? She's a, She has no energy here, okay? I still have plenty of health. I'm not even getting healed for the record. It's not like I'm being out healed or out healing her, her healing. Like I'm literally just walking her down just by staring at her and zapping her backwards. <laughs> So zap her back here, and now, because of this, I've taken this much space for my team, right? Forced Azaria into the small little choke, she can't see anything. And now, after I did that, my job is done. I rotate back over, because I hear the Bastion shooting. I look, Bastion's super low. He's at an angle where I think that he can't get healing, because he's down low. Also, the Baptiste is dead. So I go in for him right away, even though, in general, you shouldn't be jumping, jumping a, Baptiste, or a Bastion. I know in this situation, he is in tank form, but I have bubble, he's low. I'm here, right, and my May is here, I'm pretty sure he's gonna die, which is correct, right? Even if he didn't drop out of tank form, there's nothing he could have done to survive there. Zap, 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 zap. I try to jump in case she doesn't bubble. She doesn't bubble, unfortunately, I beat it, you know, 50 damage, which is uh, 10 energy, but no big deal. Cap the point, start getting healed, and I start scouting again, right? Scout, 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 scout. I see the Widow, I go for the Widow right away. Why? Nobody back here can punish me, and I know that from just knowing their hero lineup, and the Bastion was the only good punish, and she just died, and I do not want the Widow to get free chances to shoot, right? Every time she peeks here, a teammate might die. The way you deal with Widows as tanks is you minimize the number of shots they take in a game. If you have the number of shots they take, they probably get half as many kills, and that's how you win. I go for the Widow, I use Bubble to keep myself alive, Right? Zap, 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 zap. Again, nobody's gonna die here. I know nobody's gonna die. I'm not expecting to get any kills. I'm clocking. The Widow's pushed back. The Bastion's on the left side of my screen. I zap, right? And then I just get back out. And I reset. And this is the way... I didn't need that grenade, by the way. Um, this is the way that Winston's played, right? You zap, you force him back, you retreat. And you do that over and over and over again. And that's how you hold space. So I step up right now. Why? Because the Zarya bubble's gonna end soon. And I know that. So I also think I've tracked her bubbles and realized she has no bubbles. Because she bubbled the uh, the Widow when I went in, I believe. Yeah. So it's... Go, 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 Right. That's bubble number one. Great. So I know that Zarya only has one bubble left at most. I leave. Right. Get healed. Come back. I see Zarya's bubbled again. That's bubble number two. So she might have some time left in our next bubble. Right. A significant amount of time left in the last bubble. But for now, I know that I have a window for at least a few seconds to do something. I use this opportunity to jump not the Zarya, but the Ana. The problem here is the Bastion's gonna end up coming out in time. Eh, no, he doesn't. No, this is a good. This is a really good jump. Yeah, so I jump in here. I think I clip this railing. Is that what happens? I land shorter than I expect. Yeah, I, I landed shorter than I expect because I hit the railing. But ends up being okay. I zap the Ana. You see that when I even when I zap her, I look to the left to see whether or not there's a way for me to splash more. You see how I look to the left right now? I'm like, oh, is there more? No. And I make sure that I keep zapping her. If there was, I could have kept my camera to the left to get to zap. Uh, two targets, her and another target. Zap, 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 do a bunch of damage, right? And I get back out. Just a note on ult charge farming, okay? So starting from here, right? I go back in. I'm at 45, 46% right now. And I think I leave this with 71%. So I get a quarter of my ulti right here. Zap, zap, zap. You see how fast it goes right now? Bam, right? 71% and back out. 25% ult per, per jump. That's good. I see the Bastion was killed by the Hanzo. What does that mean? I can go back in as soon as I have jump. Right? I stay here a second to just heal. Even little things like taking cover like this is big. And a lot of lower rank players don't do this. They just stand out here and they're like, oh, can I get healed enough? Just, just tuck in, right? Tuck in, reduce damage to you, get healed. I look for the jump. Go in. Bam. Slam, right? Again, not super aggressive. I'm not going to get kills. I could jump in here if I want to be crazy aggressive. I do not think we will kill enough of them. So that's why I'm doing these, these more conservative front landing jumps. Right? Landing in the front of them, allowing them, quite frankly, to escape, but that's okay, right? Especially since my May is walling off my own team. Right? Just take what I can get. Nobody needs to die here. Jump back out. 
I'm also, by the way, tracking their grab. So I presume the Zarya is getting closer and closer to the grab. If she does not have it at the end of this fight, I would assume she has it for the next fight. 62. So she's actually probably playing, uh, I would say, under expectations relative to where she should be. I go in here because I know the Zarya is uh, purpled. I'm going to bubble down. She's not going to die. Fine. Right? There's no follow up here. Uh, this is unfortunate. I get lower than I really want to. So I pop Primal here just to make sure I don't die. I think this is probably a bad jump for me. I misread when the Bastion would be out. I thought I had more time, but I didn't. Uh, it doesn't actually matter. The Bastion's not even related. They just burn me down straight up because I jump in without bubble. I got too aggressive here with, on the on the Discord. I'm not expecting none of these to be in line of sight of the of the Zarya, but this is definitely a mistake by me. So I go in, Bastion's popped, and you see as soon as he pops, I jump, get the mini, right, and I'm gonna tuck into the corner to prevent the Bastion from killing me. Little things like that save your life, right? Little bits of cover, right? He's shooting me, I'm like, oh shoot. I jump in, I tuck in right here. See, he doesn't get a good look at me, and I jump right back out as soon as I get it, two seconds later, right? Every two seconds you have jump in Primal. So I should stay back. I know the Zarya is gonna be close. I expected her to have grab right now, which is why I do this early jump to bubble her off to prevent her from grabbing. It is not uncommon for you to actually block grab using bubble in this situation, which would be huge. Great, she wants to run away, great, fine. I see the Bastion. And what do I do? I look around, see, is there anybody else? So Dragon forces out the Baptiste. I understand that I can kill him right now. I get the kill. I look back, I see, hey, what's the Bastion doing? Well, still sitting there, I'm gonna heal. I hear tank mode, I chill, and I'm gonna play up a little bit right now just to see if I can maybe get some zaps in in a second, but not super aggressively. I get Nano here unexpectedly. I don't go in right away. I wait a little bit for the Bastion to focus somebody else. And then now I go because jumping the Bastion alone, even while Nandal, will still result in me dying. Like, he's still gonna do like something like 160 damage a second or so to me. Plus Azaria, I could easily be taking 300 damage a second, even through Nano. So, in this situation, I wait a little bit, I see that the Ana is out of position, right? She is way too aggressive, jumps past, and as soon as I see the Ana, I go for the Ana, I bubble off, and knocks the Bastion sideways, and knowing the Bastion's behind me, even though he's out of tank form now, I go forward and kill the Ana, Excellent, right? Keeping the Bastion on the other side of me. The Will's right next to me, but I didn't notice. Is that the Bastion? I jump in because I want to get this kill. Zarya bubbles, fine, whatever. Right? I know the Bastion doesn't have tank form. If he had tank form, I 100% die here. But I know he doesn't tank form because I just saw him use it. Right? He's still got two seconds left on tank form. Zap, 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 zap. He nearly dies. I could have killed him with melee, but I mean, it's tough. I had to be closer to do that, and that would keep me further from the jump, which would make it more likely I would die. So I decided not to risk it, go back but I do get him with a right click. So resetting again, get healed, right? Trying to see, hey, what's going on? I peep ping the Widow. Every single time I see her, I ping the Widow. Chill, 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 right? I see the Widow again. I think about jumping her, but I don't because I don't know where the Bastion is. So I just have to take the chances that she doesn't kill one of my teammates right now because if I jump up here and the Bastion is waiting and he goes tank form, I can just die right away or, or waste the bubble, which would also be very problematic. So waiting, 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 waiting. Okay, I see three up top. I hear the Bastion go ulti. As soon as he does, I go. Because he cannot attack me when he's in, when he's in ulti, right? I mean, he can drop his explosions on me, but I don't think that's likely to happen. So I go right away as soon as he pops ulti. I go in right now. This is my good opportunity. I did not see the Bastion here on my screen, which is a big mistake. Zap, 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 zap. I forced out Lamp. I forced out Grenade. Uh, I think Ana might even try to sleep me. She tried to sleep me and missed. So this is a bad jump. This is a 100% mistake, and it's because I did not see the Bastion earlier. He gets nailed, I get shredded, and die. Right? So I make a mistake. Fortunately, um, my Ana ends up stalling here against the, the Baptiste for a silly long time. So I'm going to get back to the fight. Coming in. I see my Ana's there. I see they're both diving for her right now. The ball's dropping, and the Baptiste is dropping. I'm dropping right away, and I'm going to bubble her off, and I'm going to try to body block for her. Right? Now... Ball doesn't have a good opportunity. I accidentally wake up the ball here. I just chill. I would assume the Ana would have used sleep by then. I see the Baptiste here. Do I go after him? No. I'm waiting because I want my team to collect right now. I don't want to go too far out of position until more of my team is able to regroup. So that's why I'm just playing safe right now. I go in, look, look, right? See where the ba Bastion is. I hear Bastion slash see him right here. And I, what do I do? I avoid him. Like, yeah, there's three targets here, but he can murder me in like a second and a half. So I go for the Widow. Unfortunately, she grapples over this. I think that was accidental or coincidental. She was grappling over the wall. I reload, come back down. Now I'm in the back line. Great. This bubble was unnecessary. All right. Flamp force, jump in, kill over the slam. 
Zap, 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 zap. I focus Bastion here because I want to make sure Bastion dies before he gets his next tame form. He's probably pretty close to it. Uh, There's only six seconds. Six seconds. Kill him. Uh, three, two. Yeah, he's at two seconds left. Yeah. So kill the Bastion, and at this point, it's just easy cleanup. It's just the the ball left, and we kill him, and then that's it. All right. So next point, same deal. They've swapped off the uh, Bastion for Farah, and they've swapped the Zarya for Roadhog. Right. Often thought of as the the Winston counter. So how do I play against Roadhog? Well, same general idea against all my counters, which is avoid the heck out of them, <laughs> figure out where they are and avoid them and keep going after the vulnerable members of the team. If they don't have any vulnerable members of their team, like let's say their whole lineup is like, uh, you know, let's say Torb, Reaper, Roadhog, Moira, uh, like Mercy or something, then you should not be playing Winston. <laughs> like you're just never gonna get any value there. But against only one counter, I think you're perfectly fine playing Winston. I think two counters is like on the edge where you should think about maybe not playing Winston, and three is probably don't play Winston unless you're a one trick. So I'm gonna get space out here really early, which is good. I got some mobile here, you can get out here quickly. So I get out here way before they even turn their their corner. So I get out here quickly, identify what the tank is. Oh, I see it's a Roadhog. I immediately start backing up. I don't walk too far to the left to avoid him hooking me, right? If he does hook, I can walk to the right and snap the hook. Get around this corner. I actually probably could hook me there. So what do I do? I'm just waiting and I let the Roadhog in. Again, see, the Roadhog's in, that's fine. Like you just can't do anything about it. If he kills people, he kills people. There's nothing you can do about it as, as Winston. Like you put bubble down defensively, this is why I see lower rank Winston too. They'll stand here and bubble and try to protect their team. Not worth it, it's not valuable. They'll just blow the bubble and then kill your teammates anyway. I'm looking at the back line to see, hey, who can I kill? Oh, there's a Widow? Oh, she used Grapple? Great, easy kill. Jump in, zap, 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 zap. Zap, 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 dead. Great. So one's down just for me, right? From my play, I just killed one person. My odds of winning this fight went from 50-50 to like 75-25. So I jump in right away. Why do I jump in on both? Because if they're both occupied, they're both low, and my team is here. That's what allows me to jump into both of them. And I have bubble. Zap. I try to go for the Baptiste. He manages to get away. Roadhog grabs me. But again, he doesn't do enough damage that he can kill me through my team's healing plus bubble. Even though he does a lot of damage, still not enough to kill me through all that. I jump with the Baptiste, force jump. Zap, 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 zap. He gets hooks. What is what happens when I when I hook? I just turn my head away. Right? He gets one shot on me. Great. I'm at full health. I don't care. I literally just turn away and I go for the Baptiste. I literally don't care about the Roadhog. <laughs> so we did a little bit of chasing here with the Baptiste. Zap. Kirko comes in for some reason. Baptiste is gonna die here. Both supports dead. Good stagger. So, doing some right clicks, I zap the Hanzo. I see how low he gets, he eats a, an arrow right there, and I immediately jump and kill him. Why? I know there are no supports here, and I know the tank should not be back yet, based on my general game sense of, like, timing. I know I have time to kill this, this Hanzo, and I know there's a mega health pack here that I can grab after. Kill the Hanzo, Bear commits to trying to kill me, zap, 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 right? She doesn't quite get there, I bubble her, bubble her off. Right click, zap her. I see Roadhog here, but I see that he pulls in my Mora to kill, so there is no hook right now. So I don't have to worry about hook. If he hooks, I die instantly, right? One right click, hook, left click, instantly kills me. Or even a, a hook headshot would kill me. So that gives me time to go and greed for this Farah kill. And now I can leave. So again, all this is happening in real time, right? So starting from these reads. Da da da. Right? I'm just right clicking and zapping, and so I dive heroes. Always be ready to do something. Okay? Other heroes, brawl heroes, you can't follow up on stuff like this. Like he gets low, nothing I can do. What am I gonna do? Throw a fire strike at him, right? Throw a javelin? Maybe, yeah. Maybe I hit it, but like low chance of success, right? 10%, 20% chance. But I dive in here, hundred percent chance he dies. Literally impossible for him to not die here unless the Pharaoh like concusses me out of the air. So zap go in, get the kill. Alright, Pharaoh's here. Zap, 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 zap. Bubble. I know I have the mega here too if I need it. Right? I'm very, very close to the mega. I see slash hear the Roadhog hook my Moira and kill her. Great, kill the Vera, now I leave. And now we've traded, and now we continue the stagger. I right click farming ulti. I see the Roadhog come out. Great, I jump back, give them some space, right? I need them to come in and spread out a little bit so that I can go after them, right? I'm not a brawl tank. I can't play right here and try to fight the whole team. I need to let them come in and give them space in exchange for spreading out their team, right? It's very, very hard for them to death ball all the time because of just the way the game works, right? Spam, you know, angles, etc. 
So Dragon's gonna go off and kill two here. That's really unfortunate. I go for the back line just to see if I can possibly do something. So I get hooked here, shot, zapped. I jump back up. So I don't know the geometry here well at all. Like I basically have never been here in my life <laughs> as a tank. Like you just never go over here. So I didn't know, I thought maybe I could jump over the top. That doesn't work. I'm like, oh shoot. I pop primal. Cause I'm like, hey, maybe I can do something here. Knock the Kiriko back. I expect her to jump. Yep, she does. I go, this is just really awkward. Nothing's gonna happen here. I waste this primal. I probably should've just died, realistically. I think I probably should've just died or just not gone into that at all, but we're already down. We're already down two, so I was just trying to make a play. But wasting primal, I think, was a mistake. I think jumping in was probably okay, but wasting primal was a mistake. And now you see me face taking the Roadhog, which you might think is a weird thing. This is a distance where the Roadhog cannot actually injure you that much. At this distance, he's only doing probably 90 damage per shot, give or take. Right? You're, you're in a distance where left click doesn't do that much and right click doesn't do that much. Right? In fact, a little bit forward would be even better. So I'm actually not worried about dueling him at this distance. He just stays back there. If he pulls me in, I'm full health. Right? Full health, I have bubble, I have jump, I have supports. I'm not going to die. Looking for the Pharah, Zap the Baptiste. I see the Rurag here. He doesn't have hook now, but no reason for me to dive and force anything because like we have point control. My Hanzo, for some reason, is like in their back line. Um... So I'm like, oh, okay, I don't know why you're over there. So I guess I walk in right now with Nano. I was obviously not expecting Nano. I go for the Ferrex, because I know nobody's healing her. I go for the supports. I bubble them off. Kiriko's forced out. Dragon gets popped. What do I do? I jump over the top. Because staying on their side, no good for me. So that's why I jump over the top, return to my team. Look to see if there's anything I can do. Nope. Come back here. Rejoin my supports. I get hooked here. There's not a lot I can do in this situation. I'm saving jump until I get a good angle at somebody. But... It's not, not so great. There's not really any opportunities here, but it's three and five. So what can you do? Give it the point. We shouldn't have popped lessons there. Coming back forwards. I see Roadhog looking for opportunities. Oh, Baptiste is out of position. Great. Go for the Baptiste. Get him low. Reload. Unfortunately, they killed the Hanzo. I'm going to go for him. I'm actually going to kill the Pharah here with Bubble. <laughs> um, trying to pursue the pursue the Baptiste. I was assuming that I could kill the Baptiste here. He doesn't even, hasn't even used Lamp. Damn. Yeah, this is a bad call on me to, to jump in. But on the other hand, I did not expect both DPS to be over here. Like, this is a very odd spot for them to be playing, but I think it's partially forced by my May solo ulting nothing. <laughs> so, so so not solo ulting, zero ulting. <laughs> is what it is. Reset, right? Bad bad died for me, right? But we lost the... I was... It started... But the thing is, like, it didn't start with my mistake necessarily, right? It starts with the, the my Hanzo dying and me just trying to follow up. So this fight was pretty much lost no matter what. I just need to die quickly, which I did. Coming back in, I clock, hey, where's the Roadhog? Okay, Roadhog's right here. He misses hook, looking for it, looking, 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 right, seeing what I can do. I actually do not have a lot of experience playing these maps on dive versus Ramatros, where I did most of my Antarctic time. So this is a situation where you see that I'm not scared at all. Roadhog hooks me in, fine, it is what it is. I'm not even gonna use bubble, right? Just getting a little bit of space to him. I jump over the top. Why? Because somebody's got to go in at some point, A. B, I know I have Primal right now, and C, I knew where the Baptiste was. So I'm trying to land on the Baptiste, bubbling him off, right? Keeping the Roadhog on my backside, which is correct. He's actually walled off, which I didn't know that. Zap, 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 zap. Lamp is forced. All right, low. Reload, looking to see what I can kill. Kill the Baptiste. Zap, 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 zap. Zap, and that's pretty much the game. Okay, cool. So... Recapping, right? Against your counters, by and large, the best thing you can do is figure out where they are, identify what movement skills they have and whether or not they can reach you, and then play around them, right? Often it's going to involve giving them some space to get in and start spreading out and then attacking people who are isolated and using your bubble to keep yourself alive and especially keeping those high damage heroes on the opposite side of the bubble. Very, very important. Once you have Primal, you can be a lot more aggressive about the opportunities that you go in on, but still recognize that you can get melted through a thousand health. Alright, I'm going to stop there. Hopefully this is helpful.